Hey, Aaron here with Automate All The Things. I wanted to bring you this tutorial on how to uh, automatically translate your blog posts, your Webflow blog posts using Parabola and Google Translate. So I know that there's some frustration in the Webflow community around the lack of um, ability for Webflow to support localization. So I created this quick automation to show you how you could use these two tools to kind of do it non-natively. So what we'll do is I'll show you kind of the Webflow setup I have to have this running, and then we'll kind of just quickly dive into the Google Translate API and how it works, and then we'll jump into Parabola into how do we actually automatically translate blog posts using Google Translate API within that tool. So let's kind of jump into my Webflow setup. I've got two CMSs, one for my English blog posts, and those are where we're going to start off. So we're going to start off by drafting our English version. So let's look at that CMS. Uh, very simple title, slug, post, uh, things you'd find in every single blog post CMS. Uh, and then we have a paid here, which is actually a remnant from an old example, so we won't be using that. So relatively simple. And then we have a second CMS collection, which is for our French blog post. So these are the translated ones. And the fields here are, again, are pretty much a one-to-one -one mapping uh, from our English. So name, slug, post. But what I want to bring your attention to is this reference field. So here, this reference field will reference the English version of the current blog post. And it'll do two things. It'll enable us to map the English version and the French version together. So we'll know how to link from the French to the English and from the English to the French. And it'll also serve as um, knowing when we've translated a blog post when we get to Parabola. So more on that in a minute. So our Webflow setup should be very similar to uh, what you have in your blog post. So now let's kind of go and look at the Google Translate API. So I'm going to be using PAW. Um, so this API is relatively simple. Um, so essentially, it has two parameters uh, and the key, obviously. So target language. So this is the language we want to translate into. I'm going to be translating into French because I speak French, so it's easier to know the quality of the translation. Uh, then I have my API key. And then here, Q is just the input uh, that we're going to be translating. So I've just kind of went and got one of my blog posts and put it into some encoding. So we can actually put in multiple lines here. Uh, and then if I translate this, um, I get uh, an array, I get the translated text, and then the detected source language. So Google Translate will actually check what language you're sending it and then translate to your target language. Um, so very simple API. And what we're going to do is we're going to pass each of our blog posts through in Parabola to the Google Translate API, uh, get the translation, and then send it back to Webflow. So let's go ahead and jump into Parabola and see how we do that there. So if you're not familiar with Parabola, what Parabola does is it enables you to work with multiple inputs. Uh, so in our case, we're going to import uh, the Webflow CMS. Parabola is going to turn that into a table. Uh, and then with that table, we can do kind of basic table operations and then kind of ping uh, Webflow's API from data within that table. So it's really just a more convenient work way to work with um, APIs when there are multiple inputs. Um, so I think maybe it's not super clear now, but as I go through the example, I think it'll be clear what Parabola does. So you know, there are kind of three sections or three parts to what we're going to do. First, uh, right here, we're going to import um, the Webflow data. And then we're going to kind of do some operations to identify the blog posts that are not yet translated. Uh, and then we are going to kind of uh, translate them, translate the blog posts, and then export them back uh, translated into um, Webflow CMS. So those are kind of the three big parts of what we're going to do. So let's kind of talk about the import section first. So um, to import Webflow uh, blog posts, we do an API call. So if you're not familiar with uh, the Webflow uh, API, I did a live stream a couple of weeks ago where I work. Uh, I do exactly this. So I won't be going step by step in how to do it, but I will link to that live stream in the show notes. So essentially, this API call returns all um, blog posts 
that we have in that CMS. So if I'm looking here, I have my three English blog posts. So we're pulling from uh, the English posts and then I have each one of my fields. So you'll recognize the post, the name, the slug, and then a bunch of information around when and who edited last. And then we have some ID. So the collection ID and the ID of the post itself. So then we import the French and here it's exactly the same API import we have from before. And then we have our one blog post, uh, same fields. And then I just want to kind of bring your attention to uh, this right here, English post two. So this is the second time I'm recording this video. So that's why there's a little two there. And this is the ID of the English blog posts that it's referencing. So um, now we have both our English posts and our French posts in these tables in Parabola. So we are going to merge them together. So essentially what we want to do is merge um, the French blog posts onto the English ones so we can identify the ones that have not yet been translating. So my merge field or my key is the ID on the English side and then the English post reference field on the French uh, CMS. So what that does is I know that if it hasn't merged, if we don't have a match between these two fields, it means that um, the blog post has yet to be translated. So that is how I identify the two non-translated blog posts. And then easily I filter out to only have those two. So I know that if any of these fields on the right are uh, empty, blank, uh, these are the untranslated blog posts. So with that, we've imported and identified every single blog post that has yet to be translated. So we're going to cl close that off. So now that we have our uh, data in Parabola, let's go ahead and actually do uh, the translation. So what we want to do is in API enrichment, um, an API enrichment in Parabola will use fields in each column to ping a specific API. So what we're doing is we're kind of recreating that um, API call I had in PAW, but essentially substituting one of the parameters uh, with data from our table. So in our case, we want to translate the post. So all I do is I put it between little curly brackets and it'll ping that API while inputting this uh, field into the API. And then it'll append the output uh, right here on the right. So let me just run that. And what that does is that it appends the translated text on the right. Just a quick note here that if I remove these nested keys and kind of giving information and I run it, you'll notice that it returns the whole response in one column, right? So I have the array, uh, which has the translated text and the language. To split that out into columns, you first need to say that this is a top level key and then that translations need to be broken out. So let's do that. And that'll split the translated text from the detected language. And that's kind of the result we want. And this is what we're going to then update the Webflow CMS with uh, once we get to that step. So we've now translated one of the two fields that we want to. So just quickly, what I mean by that is we have our post, but we also need to translate uh, the name of the post. So what I did was because I can't call the same API twice with the same table because it'll overwrite uh, these two fields, I've just changed the column name uh, from API translated to uh, translated post French. That way I can call that API again, but instead of post, I'm calling the API endpoint with the name of our blog post to get the translation. So here I have the name translated and then I have the French content as well. So with this kind of interim step, we now have the translated text in our table as well. And all that's left to do is export it. So now um, what we want to do is update the French CMS uh, with the translation and the reference field from 
um, th this kind of table that we have in Parabola with the translated information. So what we're going to do is we're going to create new CMS items in our French blog post. So again, if you're not familiar with uh, the Webflow API and how to work with it in Parabola, I've got a few live streams that I'll put in the show notes uh, that kind of work with the type of call and the different API calls that are available. But what we need to do is do a post type call, uh, which will create a new CMS item. And then we go and get our collection ID, and then we specify that we want to create a new item. And then in the body, we specify which fields uh, we want to use. And again, what's valuable in Parabola is that you can put data from your table. So Parabola will run this API export and create this new CMS items for each row in your table. And then in the body, what I'm specifying is that in the name of the new blog post that I'm creating, go and get the translated text. So this is our French uh, name of our blog post. And then just a few information I'd say, don't archive it, don't put it as a draft. And then for the post itself, go and get uh, the translated text in French. And what's great, and I didn't mention this before, was that Google Translate will actually um, ignore HTML tags and translate text between HTML tags. So if your post initially was in English and had some kind of formatting, which it probably does, uh, the translation will have the exact same formatting. Uh, so that's really powerful in terms of not having to do any work. So I'm passing this new translated post, uh, this French post with the HTML tags uh, to the post variable in Webflow. And then for English post two, that is my reference field, I'm passing the English post ID. So that is my way to link those two blog posts together uh, so that I can link from one to the other, but also so that the next time I run this automation, when we get to that filter step, uh, we're going to know that it's already been translated. So we're passing the English ID. So we're passing this variable right here uh, into the French blog post. So just quick recap, post call, create a new CMS, fill out the fields. And then if we publish this and run, fingers crossed that it actually works. So it seems to have created uh, a couple rows. Let's go back into our Webflow CMS, refresh. And if all went well, I should come here and then I've got my three, uh, my two new blog posts. I've got my translated text in the exact same format, I've got my translated title, and then I have my English post. So what that means is if I go to uh, my Webflow kind of template, select an item, whoop, there we go. Uh, I can actually link to the English version. So let's look at what this looks like, like here. And then I can link between the two. Um, yeah, so that completes the export. Um, this is actually a really cool automation. I'm, I'm super excited about it. I'm super excited to know what you thought of it. Um, I'm going to take a moment to huge shout out to uh, Matthew from the support team at Webflow who helped me kind of think uh, uh, or suggested actually the, that link between CMS items. So hopefully this is useful to you. If it is, let me know. Uh, I'd love to do more tutorials like this. And uh, cheers, good local.